Uh, today, we're going to be doing a review of a product that I did an unboxing video for about three days ago. Um, my wife was lucky enough to receive the new Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 a few days early. So we did an unboxing video of that, and I just figured that I'd give you a kind of three-day update on how she's liked using it and some of the kind of testing that I figured out with it uh, in those three days. So uh, one of the things I want to say right off the bat is that we both really like this thing. Um, she absolutely loves it. Um, there's a few things that I found at this point that kind of bother me, um, but that's just personal preference and probably me being picky, but we'll get to those things as it goes on. Um, the first thing that we'll kind of go over is the display. Uh, the display is amazing. It's a great laptop display, whether it's in laptop mode or, you know, flipped around into tablet mode, uh, the display is great. Um, one of the things that we were kind of surprised with was that in the pre-release uh, leaks that were kind of coming out for this thing, is it was leaked that this thing was going to have the um, Intel Arc GPU in it. Now, it doesn't actually have that GPU. It has an Intel Iris Xe uh, graphics card in it, so it does have Intel graphics, but it's not the Arc platform. Um, so I just want to kind of get that clarified for anyone who's still curious as to whether that actually happened or not. Um, it does have 1920 by 1080 display. Um, it's worked really well. I've compared it to um, other 19 by 20 monitors and the display on this, even though they're the same resolution, seems to be a lot crisper and a lot nicer than on an actual uh, computer monitor. Um, one thing that this computer does do is it does allow you to output to um, up to two 4K displays. Um, I have not ran two 4K displays on it, but I have tested it on one 4K display, a 50 inch Samsung uh, 8 series 4K, and it did really well on that. Um, the One of the things I did notice is that in general, the picture on the 4K display is a little bit nicer than it is on the monitor. It's also a lot bigger. Uh, the graphics card was able to keep up with it, no problem whatsoever. Um, it did better than my iPad does on broadcasting to the bigger screen, so I'll definitely give the laptop a plus for that. Um, but one of the things I did notice is that the display on the computer itself is actually so nice that it still actually has a little bit crisper, um, more uh, noticeable contrast ratios between those dark darks and the um, brighter spots that you get. Um, I haven't noticed a lot of kind of cloud drag through it. Um, I was able to get some. I enhanced the image and then did kind of a white tracer on the black background so you can get a little bit of that uh, halo effect. Um, but all in all, unless you're kind of trying to get it or in a really dark situation, it's not that bad and it's not that noticeable. Um, and especially in a laptop like this, it's an amazing laptop. Um, as far as, as I mentioned, being able to output to other displays is that this thing does not have display or HDMI out on it. Um, I thought that it was gonna have HDMI, it doesn't. It just has uh, USB-C and Thunderbolt ports on both sides. Um, that's definitely nice, having on both sides, being able to plug it in and have cables going two different directions or being able to charge from either side is really nice. And I get that they wanted to keep it as thin as possible, which got rid of those ports, but it'd still be kind of nice to have it. Um, I did go out and, oh, I just moved it. Um, purchased an Anchor uh, USB-C to HDMI adapter, so that that's what I've been using for plugging it into the 4K TV and running other tests off of it. I do acknowledge that having to go through a converter into an HDMI cable into a TV, there is going to be a little bit of interference there. So that may have skewed things a little bit, but all in all, it still worked great. Um, I had no issues on that front. So I do recommend getting one of these things. They're helpful and they're like 10, 15 bucks. Um, they do have some higher end ones, uh, but so far, the higher end ones have allow you to charge and output video at the same time. 
Um, but with this thing, it has enough ports on it to just be able to plug your uh, charger into one side, have this come out the other side, and it works just fine. Um, the other issue that I found with this thing, and this is kind of an issue that's going to be across the Samsung line, um, is this was advertised as being 5G compatible. This particular model is not 5G compatible. It may be later in the production line, but from what I found online is a lot of the early models did not come pre-installed with a SIM card tray in it. Um, that was one of the things that we were both really looking forward to was her being able to um, put a SIM card in it, have that 5G capability, have the super versatility on the go. And I thought maybe it had integrated SIM, which would be weird, but I thought maybe uh, when I realized it wasn't a tray, but there's not, and there's no way I could figure out to put cellular on this particular one. Um, like I said, I have done some digging online, and from what I found is some of the Pro 13 inches are coming with the SIM, and most likely later in the run, all of them will have it. I don't know why they did not just put it in all of them to begin with. Uh, especially with that being one of the big pushes even in their official Samsung trailers is that it's 5G compatible. That bothers me. Um, it's probably one of those fine print things, but just a heads up that, you know, you're going to have to figure something else out. Um, we've just been using Hotspot uh, off the phone. It works. Obviously, you know, though, that with Hotspot, you're limited in the amount of data that you can hotspot versus having unlimited data, um, which we even have the beyond unlimited on Verizon's network. But once you hit enough data, you still end up getting throttled on hotspot. Plus hotspot is a lot less efficient and a lot less um, versatile than just being able to have 5G in the laptop. Um, the other thing I've noticed is just kind of a personal thing is it did come installed with Windows 11. Um, it's really nice that it has the latest system in it. That's been a little bit of an adjustment getting used to 11. Um, just kind of finally got enough used to Windows 10 and then they switched to 11. Uh, but that's just a weird minor little nitpick. Um, aside from that, uh, everything else has been great. Uh, everything's held up nice. Everything's still nice and firm and sturdy. Um, the display works great, whether it's in a bright room or a dark room. Um, so, yeah. If you don't need the 5G compatibility, which is probably my biggest gripe with this thing, then, you know, it's going to be amazing. And that's why I'm like, my wife doesn't care is all that much because she can hotspot um, and she's not going to need to do as much on the go stuff. Um, I've been trying to take this thing with me to work to be able to do testing there. Um, and that makes it a little bit harder to um, do it when I'm trying to hotspot or if I have to use my phone. Um, for something else. Um, and then uh, as far as the Intel graphics go, like I said, it doesn't have the ARC GPU, but it does have an Intel uh, XE graphics in it, um, which is Iris, which is the go-to at this point for laptop displays anyways. Uh, it works great. So one last thing that I'm going to um, try and get edited into this that I forgot to mention uh, during the review was that the uh, Galaxy Book 2 comes very optimized for battery life, um, which is great if you're not needing performance, but uh, if you're wanting a better resolution, if you're wanting to watch videos on it, I do recommend going in and changing all of the settings. Um, HDR was disabled when this thing first came and all of the resolutions were pretty much set to 1080p at most. Um, so I had to go through, bump those all up to the 920 um, by 1080, um, and then bump or to get the HDR turned on, had to do a full restart on it, which then actually triggered a BIOS update in order to be able to get those new settings in there. Um, so if you do decide to restart it, get HDR turned on, get it bumped from just base 1080 to 1920 by 1080, um, that it will need a restart. And when it does restart, if the BIOS comes up, that was just normal. Um, 
and maybe as time goes on they'll just have them kind of configured differently through their updates and software um, but at least with this one everything was turned way down so i did have to go through took five minutes or so um, to get into the control panel got into the display um, and boosted everything up there um, and then checked the processor out and made sure all that stuff was um, clocking properly uh, to get some good performance i obviously haven't had the ability to test the actual battery length on it since doing that um, i'm sure it's going to drop it they say that this thing has 21 hours of battery life out the box um, i should have probably tested that before upping the settings on it but with the increase in settings i'm hoping to still at least allow my wife to get 10 or so minimum hours um, of uh, continuous watching i don't see any scenario in which she's ever watching for 10 hours straight anyways um you know most people you may watch a one to two hour movie tops if you're not watching it on tv if you want to watch it on here and then do some internet browsing or a little youtube here and there um most people aren't going to go through 10 hours of streaming in a day anyways so if there's any issues i will make sure to let you guys know uh but for now hopefully all these changes of settings continue to make this thing perform great it did make a big difference in display and it did make a big difference um in viewing so i'll go ahead and pass it back over to myself and let myself finish the video i just wanted to make sure to interject that you do have to tweak this thing if you want the better resolution if you have any other questions uh go ahead let me know in the comment section down below i'll do my best to find an answer if i don't know it already um, like I've said in the past, I hope to use it as more of a discussion section rather than just a comment section. Um, so yeah, shoot me a question. Let me know if you've received your, uh, Galaxy Book 2 yet, uh, whether it's the Pro or the 360, how you're liking it, um, or if these videos have helped you at all. Um, if they have helped you, I'd appreciate it if you give me a subscription. Um, trying to get this channel to grow and hopefully as it grows, it'll give me more opportunities to get more tech up tech in to be able to unbox or review um, and be able to kind of grow this community. So I appreciate your time. Once again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, for now, this is Jared signing out and hopefully you come see me over on Twitch uh, when I get that set up and start streaming over there. So thanks and have a great day. Bye.